on the process that we follow when we design new products or develop new products. And then also, um, finally, in the chapter, we'll be looking at the product life cycle. Right. What are the next step? The next step is when you do a business analysis. Now, this is done for a specific purpose. The purpose of doing a business analysis is, A, you need to look at what the general economic environment looks like. Is it a good time for us to um, launch a new product? Would consumers have money to, um, to buy our new product? Um, currently, not too many people are, or not too many businesses are developing new products unless it is to satisfy a need that exists, but there's no product to, um, to satisfy it. Um, but not too many um, um, new products are surfacing at the moment because um, of the economic uh, constraints that we are exp um, experiencing with the global recession. Um, however, the people who are much more clever than I am and the financial wizards um, and the economists and these people, um, the actuaries and uh, work with these mathematical models every day and economic models on a daily basis, many of them are actually of the belief that this is a good time to actually um, to start a new business, to bring out new products. Um, and there is there's good reason to believe that they might have a good case. Um, Warren Buffett was one of those. Um, up to a number of years ago, he was one of the top three richest people in the world. He's probably still in the top ten. But um, and he made his money through investments. Um, he started when he was in grade seven already, and he was collecting um, Coke bottle tops. That was before it was these plastic screw of cops. It was actually the original Coke bottles. He started and and in, um, he went to companies who actually uh, recycled it and used it again. So he was yeah he had a rolling and he was already I think he bought his first share before he was 14 years old. Um, obviously he had a knack for it and um, he was one of those that said that um, his secret was every time that the world goes into a crisis, that's when he start looking for opportunities. And when everything is going well, that's what he usually sells. Because that's when people have money and they can buy. So when he's selling and they have the money to buy, um, so yeah, so it's, it's, that was his approach. So yes, and I'm not going to go into all those economic technicalities at this stage, but this is where you are going to do a SWOT analysis. You're going to do a SWOT analysis now to say, is the market out there um, ready for this? Is the timing ready to enter a new product? And can we, do we have the resources? Can we actually, um, can we actually manufacture this product profitably? Um, if your answers are no to those questions, you seriously have to con reconsider entering this new product and developing this new product. We haven't developed it yet. We've just got a prototype. So you've got a couple of ideas, but we, you, you've not, um, you've, you've, you've sort of bent it down. It's, it's more than just an idea. It's a concept now, but you have not gone into production. So you have not wasted any money. You've just spent time um, in, in, in brainstorming everything at this point. So that's why it's important to also look um, externally and see what is available. What are um, our, our competitors doing? Are they also maybe, because that's what Apple and, 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 um, and, um, and Samsung are constantly doing. They're almost like, all right, what have they brought out? Okay, let's, we have to bring out something similar. Um, it's because it's, a, it's the, the, the choice between Apple and Android, or iPhone and Android is, it's a 50-50. Um, if you've always been used to iPhone, you'll probably stay with iPhone. You're not going to change. If you've always been with Samsung, you might consider to change. But so it's, it's yeah, there's, there's, no, there's no clear winner in that regard. But therefore, they are copying each other. Similar features. They've improved, the, they've added the extra phone, um, extra camera in the, in, in, the, in the new phone. Okay, right, maybe we should do that as well. No, 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 we've got enough cameras already. Let's improve the... Um, the quality, the pixel quality, for instance. So they're constantly looking at what the competitors are doing uh, because it, it gives us a very good idea. But this is where you are going to start doing preliminary um, um, calculations. 
possible demands, possible cost, possible sales that we are predicting we might experience. Right. Next stage is when you're actually going into development. Now you're drafting the plans. Um, it's it, you actually design a little prototype. You test it in the lab. Um, you blow up your experiment three or four times. Um, how many times did Elon Musk not um, with his SpaceX um, um, research and 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 trying to design a um, a spaceship that could actually go into space and return safely. I mean, many, many times he was in the news, oh, they've tested another one and it exploded a kilometer into the air kind of thing over the desert somewhere in America. And, um, but that's part of this phase. This is where you design your prototypes and you test your prototypes, you try it, but it's still, um, um, it's, it's still very much um, in-house. You have not, Exposed customers to it yet, or potential customers to it yet. That's part of the next testing phase, right? Which is the next phase where you um, are going to select certain um, select certain um, potential customers. You're going to expose them. We're going to ask them to trial it for a, for a period, for instance, um, and you're going to get feedback. Um, their feedback because that's important. Remember, you haven't gone into production yet. So you just have a few prototypes that you are um, um, that that they are testing, um, and um, expecting people to give them feedback on it. And based on that, they will check um, um, if the criteria that the market says it wants is actually met by the product that we are going to push into the market. If it's not, um, we can it. And you also. Um, can repeatedly test, like the um, Elon Musk example I've used. But at a point, you're going to realize, you know what? Is it ever going to work? Is it still profitable for us to test this? Because when we send it into the market, we've got to sell it at a, at a specific price just to recover our cost that we've incurred at this point. So is it really worth it? You will get to that sort of um, T junction in your in your process um, run about now. Um, when you start getting the feedback from that specific selected group of customers that you have tested it with, if the feedback is great, you'll start with your commercialization. You'll start with um, printing brochures and um, um, and you actually are going to start building an inventory. You're going to go into production. You're going to build up an inventory because there's no point in. Um, in advertising and marketing to people and say, this is a new product, it's going to, and they launch it and it will be available on the shelves in two weeks and then you don't have stock. Okay, so you, you have to, your timing in this regard needs to be very, very good. And um, once you've made the decision that you've made in, in step number seven, that it can actually, based on the feedback, based on your projections, based on all the calculations that you've done preliminarily, um, you are, actually convinced that there is a market for it, you can produce it profitably, um, and you are going to start manufacturing it. So it is available when customers want it. Okay, there's nothing that customers hate more than to buy something, and then it's only available. People want it now. People want it now. Um, if they know that there is a waiting period because it often happens with with those launches if they um if a product is launched and you are given the opportunity because usually it's launched to a selective group of people um that you know is more than likely going to be interested in this product you can get um, um, um you you get orders in advance um the promises that you make there is very important because if somebody says that I signed up today and I even paid a thousand rand whatever as a sort of a deposit on it just to secure my place or secure the product for me and um, you know what a week to wait is nothing and that week becomes a month and becomes two months you know what not are you not just going to buy the product you're going to demand the refund for your deposit as well and you're probably never going to use that company again it's very important that you get your timing right here because you have already started advertising that something new is just around the corner. 
why some products succeed and others not. Um, sometimes it's a poor match with um, um, the product characteristics and the customer needs. We, we, we're adding something and then it's a function that the customers never use. Um, um, there's a couple of functions on my phone that I never use. So um, is the phone that I'm using actually in the right phone for me? Probably not, if I'm not using a specific function. Um, if that function is, is, is like the phone, is slowing down the functions I really um, want the phone to use uh, or, or use the phone for, um, I'm going to change to a different product. Um, they do not offer unique or superior value. We said it yesterday when we had the price quality um, um, discussion um, during the, the chapter on, on pricing. Customers want value for money, especially during difficult times, like we said yesterday, recessions and when inflation is high. Value for money is important. Value for money is very subjective, though. It's what's valuable for you might not be valuable for me. Um, however, the general perception for customers still is um, if, if the customer feels that the product that they've bought has satisfied their need and that it actually um, added value, then they'll support it. Then they'll, then they'll support it again. And that's what you, that's what you want. So if that didn't match, then unfortunately it's not going to, um, um, the product might fail. Incorrect positioning, yeah, it could happen. It, it has happened before that products would came out and they, they, they targeted a specific market, they positioned, or they positioned themselves um, in, uh, incorrectly in the market, but maybe they were too close to the competitors or maybe they were too far away from the competitors because they, um, they, they were afraid that um, the impact of the competitors are going to be too much um, on, 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 on their business. Um, it could be that they that they hey, that they have just uh, that they have just positioned themselves incorrectly, and therefore, um, it's not necessarily the um, it's not necessarily the wrong um, product. It's just not um, available at the right place. That's where your marketing communication comes in. As I've many times said, you can actually reach the wrong people with the right message or get the right message out to the wrong group of customers, or we can get the wrong message out to the right customers. Either one of those two is going to result in, in, um, in disappointment because your business is not going to, um, your business is not going to survive that. And very often that, because that happens, later on products, research, music, songs that are, are, are that are, um, um, songs that that are launched, and then it, it doesn't catch on, and then they re-launch um, it three, four years later, and all of a sudden it becomes, wow, this is a great song. So or sometimes you have to reposition it because maybe the timing wasn't right, and maybe you didn't use the right platform for that. So that's why your marketing communications mix is so important. That combination, that cocktail of finding the right combination between your PR and your direct selling and your personal selling and your advertising, that has to, that has to be very, very correct um, for you to be successful. Strong competition. If there's strong competition, there's nothing you can do. You can just battle it and then, yeah, um, you can do the best you can. Um, competition will always be there and sometimes competition is healthy because competition is actually telling you exactly where you are going wrong uh, and where you can improve um, but only if you pay attention to it and actually address it you can read through some of the others I'm not going to um, to discuss each of them individually let's bring ourselves uh, that brings us to the product life cycle and obviously um, in a particular industry goes through a cycle, but then the products within that industry go through a separate cycle. That's why the industry cycle and the product cycle is not necessary. Life cycle is not necessary. It's not the same thing, but often in industries or where, where, a, where a product is very successful is usually where the product life cycle runs similarly to the industry life cycle. 
in other words, if you are in an introduction phase with a product, but the industry is already in the maturity stage, then it might be that um, it might be that your marketing strategy is is, is pitched incorrectly because um, you are not in sync with what the industry um, cycle is. In other words, if there's a, if the if everybody all of a sudden um, is looking for uh, Jeez, pick a pick up pick a something. What what would you need? What what what, what any any product? Um, let's let's look houses. You're not shopping for houses. I'm not shopping for houses. I'm scaling down. I'm looking for a smaller house. Um, the market. If everybody is in the market to buy a house because the interest rates are down, um, they. They can get um, they can get bonds um, easier. The whole process of registering a bond is is is, is, is easier. Um, then all of a sudden, a lot of people want houses. Now it might be, um, and, and that's the industry cycle. The industry cycle says, "Whoa, huge demand! Yeah, um, no stock to sell. No stock to sell because the products that we have in the market, the houses." Um, is is not in sync with what the market demands out there, and there is going to be a point where those two are actually in sync and at um, at the same point again. But that um, is just to differentiate between oh, that example is just to differentiate between an industry life cycle and a product life cycle. Now, a product goes through four different stages. The initial stage is the introduction stage. We've just gone through the process of developing a new product. You have your product and the marketing strategy that you will follow would be a very aggressive one. You're going to probably have all the items in your marketing communications mix that's available um, running um, jointly to get the maximum impact and try and reach as many people. That's usually the strategy in an introduction stage. And then you go through your growth phase and the growth phase um, Huge increase in sales. We can actually have a look at each of these um, steps individually. Um, you'll find that once you've gone into um, um, into your into your growth stage, um, because there's an increase in sales, everything is going well. Um, you will um, you you might even remember when you're in your introduction phase. There's no other competitors. Now people say, "Oh, that's interesting," and your competitors start bringing out a product that's similar. That similar product is going to, when you now enter into your growth stage, they are going to be in their introduction stage, which means that they become competitors for you. Um, and you might need to change your strategy and say, right, 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 just to keep our, our, um, um, our position in the market strong, we might reduce our price slightly. Um, let's see what their strategy is first. If they price their products similar to ours, um, then a good idea is probably to offer discounts to our customers because that can because we already established in the market. If we um, if we offer it to um, to our customers, they might consider to stay with us because they're getting it at a discount rather than change to it to the product of our competitors. So your strategy depends on what strategy is changed and modified according to the um, the stage in your life cycle of, the, of product life cycle. Um, the stage um, in the product life cycle that the product finds itself. Right. You get to the maturity stage. The maturity stage is where sort of your sales flatten out. Um, you still have sales, you still have regular sales, but it's it, there's no spikes. Um, you're still happy because um, You've made your profit, so you can still offer it profitably. Uh, it's not affecting it's not affecting your 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 total revenue, um, but the growth is slow. Your product has either reached the end of the road, or um, and you have to prepare. And and that's what you do in the maturity stage. You don't wait for the sales to decline before you act. Once you get to your maturity stage and you've gone. Th and, and your sales for a for a specific period of time have remained similar. That's usually indication that the next stage is going to be the decline stage. 
that's usually the indication that you're entering that stage where your sales are going to start dropping. Do not wait till this point where this happens for you to react. Rather, in those, um, um, rather um, act during your maturity stage um, and see that you, you that your sales um, are, um, are stabilizing. Adapt your marketing strategy to maybe offering special deals for customers, especially if you know that your company is going to introduce a new product, uh, which is an improved version of um, the current one. That's the one thing that you can do when you reach that maturity stage. So now, um, and that's where that aggressive sales um, approach now comes in, where you're trying to get rid of your, you, this is the push strategy, trying to get rid of your excess stock um, because you know there's another one coming out. So it's, it, don't wait till there's a decline in the sales of the existing product before you do that. Um, it might, it might happen uh, the impact of the old product that's being replaced or that's being upgraded, that their sales um, take a second spike um, and it increases again because that can happen too when you basically um, redesign a product or um, add new features or upgrade a product. Um, the new product can still enter the market because it will, um, um, but the old one is still available. You can still get the old um, iPhones. You can what up to what you, you can you can still get all the old phones. Um, it depends again on on your specific needs. So uh, unless there's no interest in a particular product anymore, there's no reason for uh, you to just um, to just remove it from the product line. Right. As um, we've discussed now, some of the strategies that you can follow is that you have to reestablish your position or you can hang in there and say, listen, maybe it's just a bad time. Um, let's just ride this wave. It will improve again. Or you can actually withdraw the product and say, mm, no, nobody's interested. Or, or people are still interested, but there's not enough that, um, that, will, that will result in any profitability for us. So, you know what, let's rather just uh, um, replace this product completely. Just to see if anybody in the chat room have any questions. Oh, Matthew, sorry, my friend. Load shedding. Yeah, we cannot control that. That's sad. Um, I think I'm at uh, load shedding level. I stay in the wall now, 10 to 12. Yeah, at the moment, there should be load shedding there now. You're right. Um, anyway, the session is recorded. I'll upload it this afternoon. So um, that's the best we can do. This is. We were lucky here at campus. I was preparing for, um, I was preparing, that's why I got the extra classroom because I wasn't sure because that, that other building, uh, remember we were in S11, that one um, previously, um, but I didn't want to run the risk because our power was going to be out here between eight and 10. Now this building has a generator, so then we need a classroom in this building. That's why I got this classroom just in case um, and then, um, City of Cape Town was downgraded to stage one. So it meant that we didn't have power cuts this morning. And both, we can actually both use both. But then I wasn't going to then change and say, oh, let's go back there. Anyway, um, load shedding is a constant issue. And again, people, um, if somebody asks you, that's the main reason why we are offering your online exam in June. Um, for the full 24 hours on the day itself because people are on different grids and they but if we can if we can keep escom to their promise and their promise was that we are, can actually experience load shedding throughout the winter um unfortunately um we have to be proactive and plan for that and that's the reason why that's the case if however there is problems during your um during your um exam in your that first place that gives you the instructions, um, that will there will be a number that you can contact, 086 number that you can contact. Um, if you have technical issues, not to ask me a question, but if you have technical problems with your um, with conducting your exam, yes. Uh, so I just wanted to know the June exam is that going to be online? Mm. All right. Mm. Okay. Mm -mm. I haven't got any red pens. <laughs> No, no, but the, the, the June exam will be online. And uh, end of the year exemptions? No idea. 
Absolute no idea. We, we are currently busy and discussing. We have meetings every day to plan not just um, the second semester, but plan 2022 already as well. Um, so yeah, it's it's um, that we always have a plan A, B, and C available. Um, it's, it just depends. Um, and obviously, the main the main factors that um, needs to that will be considered is um, accessibility to um, to internet, um, and then obviously um, whatever stage of um, restrictions we are in with COVID. Because I know my son yesterday, um, they were informed as of today, and he was quite happy because he didn't have to go to school today. Um, yeah, schools are back, for instance, or some schools are back um, on the old January um, delivery format where they go to school every second day. So again, based on what we expect um, from the third wave, it might not happen, but we need to pl plan for that. And unfortunately, no, we, we do not have formalized plans for the second semester. Um, I've got my timetable worked out till the end of um, till the end of the second semester, but um, it's it's nothing that's still in a in a fluid stage of and can can change. Um, right, um, people. I think at this stage, um, I think we we sort of say what. Yeah, no, no, there's not. There's not much on the slides. We can actually just look at. There are different pe people when when new products are introduced into the market. There are consumers. There are there are consumers who. Time time check. Uh, time check. Uh, Eleven forty-seven. Ah, loads of time. I'll keep you here till half past twelve. <laughs> <laughs> who needs to be away at what time? I think I'm at my house. <laughs> <laughs> Um, how long did it take, um, Rebecca, to upload it? For that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. An hour? Uh-oh. Uh, no, don't be on, no, you're on his side now, no. <laughs> nice try. Um, <laughs> um, no, when, when new products are introduced into the market, different consumers react differently. And you, you can put yourself... You tell me in what, what what category you put yourself, for instance. There are five different categories. There, there are those people, like we said in the beginning, hey, man, bring out a new product. I can't wait for new. They love new innovations. They, they want to be the first ones to try a new product. They want to be the, wow, I, did you, I saw, I got this new. Wow, I saw that ad on television. You have the new phone already. Um, there are people who want to be the first to use a product. Okay, um, that's just where they are. You get your um, early adopters. Your early adopters are the people who say, "Okay, um, let's give it a." Um, if 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 I speak to five of my friends and four of them have it, then you know what? That's an indication to me that they that the product is okay, and then I'll buy. You get your early majority. Those are the people who wait for um, um, for the majority of the market to to um, to buy the product. Um, because that's usually indication that the product is 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 um, is of quality, is um, of value, um, and that will satisfy my need. It's new products. So I'm not talking about existing products. I'm talking about new products. Some people just don't kind. People in by nature, human humans by nature don't take kindly to change. We hate change. We actually are comfortable with, with, with. Well, we, we, yeah. If things don't have to change, we'll be quite happy. Um, but unfortunately, life does not work like that. Um, life is changing um, every day, um, and we have to adapt. And that's the one thing the people who have battled the most to adjust um, during lockdown. Were the people who actually battled the most with 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 change, um, and strangely enough, those people initially were very um, unsettled because of the especially hard lockdown. They are the ones who now have completely reverted to the opposite and said, "No, I actually like this. I'm not going to go back to that." 
Um, people adapt quickly, or not quickly, but people do adapt, some quicker than others, okay? Um, and then you have your, major, your, your late majority. Your late majority are the ones, everybody has that, uh, that's me, at the moment where I'm in my life. Everybody has it, okay. Usually that's cheaper than as well, the prices come down too, because um, the companies selling the products have reached the, um, their financial objectives. Um, you've got your late majority, those are the people who, and, and quite a, a large percentage of the market, um, they get it. Um, if I, yeah, I'm interested in that new product, I'm not going to get it because mine is still fine. Then either mine breaks um, or I have to replace it for um, another reason, then I'm ready. Then I'll actually, then I become part of the of the um, late majority that join and then get the product. Uh, and then you have your, what they call the laggards. The laggards are the ones who, you know what? We hate all these changes. I'm still with my old 3610 or 6510 Nokia or whatever, or 3210, whatever. I, my mother's like that. It's not that she doesn't, she, she's quite savvy, tech savvy on, at the age of 86. I think it's because my my sister um my sister is has been in has been living and working and teaching in in Singapore for the whew, the last 17 18 years and now they're relocating to to Vietnam at the end of this month um and uh, to be in contact with remain in contact with your children um she was forced to um become tech savvy so they can actually zoom and skype and and, and phone and whatever i said showed her the other day for the first time the whatsapp calls and she wasn't aware that that actually is available to you. no but anyway she's one of those she ah, you know what i can show her now and i can mom it's not going to cost the extra cent serious yes okay then she tries it next time she has to do it she goes back to the old ways that's a that's a laggard they, they are so used to doing it in a certain way that they actually, you, you can't trouble them with, with, with new innovations. Yeah, whatever. Nice, but, and um, they're not necessarily going to, it, it's not, not going to necessarily result in a purchase um, because um, their characteristic is of such a nature that they actually, um, um, that they actually don't, um, they don't change um, their habits and um, and behavior. Right, product characteristics and the rate of adoption or, or diffusion, um, the rate that we've just explained why people um, are um, laggards or while they are um, innovators or um, early majority or late majority is because sometimes the changes of the product is is complex maybe in that was me a number of years ago after being an android user for as long as i can remember i think i was an android user from the first time that um that cell phones came out and then by default i um i changed to iphone about five years ago initially that first that first six months, I was lost. The only thing I recognized was my ringtone. Um, but I could almost use none of the functions because I was, I was completely, the menu was completely new to me. And I think that's, that's sometimes that complexity of the product um, is actually what, what, what prevents people from, um, from A, changing to a new product, or be changed to a new product at some point. Um, that's, sort of, that's where that um, customer reluctance comes in um, to, to try new things because sometimes it's just too complex to change. Um, and and um, if you provide them with um, the last point there, um, if the product has a trialability, in other words, um, okay, fine. Like I said to my personal trainer um, students, um, or, or personal trainers when I did some um, upskill training for them. Um, offer your customer one month free sessions. Let them experience what you can do um, and don't try and sell the business from the start. Let them experience the benefit first. If you can experience something, um, 
I changed from um, my, my 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 wife run over a, um, um, a dog, a stray dog, a um, number of years ago. There was minimal damage to the car, um, but it had to go in because that part was not in stock. So I I got a um, 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 I got a vehicle that I could use um, for well until mine was 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 um, was fixed. I enjoyed that new vehicle that they gave me as a courtesy vehicle so much that when I had to um, sell my car again, that was the brand because I got the opportunity to try it out. Okay, so that's what many of us would, if we were given, the, I know, would, would you be, would, would you be um, interested in, in using a product if you know how it tastes and how it feels and um, if you like it or not? Of course you will. Um, that's why those demos that they have, especially for new drinks or new food. Um, excuse me? Yes. Yes. That's how they got all of us. Because they knew. Once we know what we... Wow! You stick to it. You pay your subscriptions. <laughs> um, yeah. Interesting. I watched um, um, the, the Friends reunion again last night. Um, I'll know that, and it was strange to me how, because my son in grade 11 is, is very much, he's a friend's um, fanatic, um, um, the older one, he knows about friends, but he's not going to, but he's also not one who sits down and, and watches television for longer than five minutes, then something else has to happen. Um, yeah, it was just interesting to me that a, a product like that, that's amazing how a product like that could actually be so successful. But now that we have seen uh, what happened behind the scenes, how they initially identified the, the right people and cast them for the specific roles, um, you, can almost not, you can almost not picture anybody else in those roles. Um, but yeah, it was quite interesting. So yes, Netflix is a classic example of um, giving you that trial month. And it often happens. How many times have you not um, been, I don't want to say course, because I mean, it was your choice. Um, but you get these trial periods. I mean, oh, yes, I've got this PDF uh, converter that I want. Okay, right, trial period. You can get it. For, uh, and then I usually scroll down and see, okay, what's it going to cost me next month if the trial period is over? Because they were not going to remind you that your trial period is, is ending. You're just going to get that first month bill, and then you can't get out of the deal. But no, that's a very common practice to, to for, for new products um, or strategy that a market is used to engage people to new products that they probably would not have used. And, and that's one of the best ways of, of, of um, providing an opportunity for customers to try a product before they actually buy it and, and commit to it. Um, right. Anybody wants to ask me anything at this stage? I know that there's some of you are anxious of getting to a place where you can submit your assignments. So I'm going to... <laughs> Anybody, any questions, Dana? Anybody at this stage? Everybody that, um, everybody that emailed me yesterday regarding the assignments, um, all of you, um, I've replied to all of you. Are you all happy with, um, some asked me to remove you so you can resubmit and stuff like that. Um, have all your questions regarding that, be, excuse me, have that been answered? Yes, sir. Thank you. I got your response. Thank you, Mary. Very much. Nice to hear that as well, Dana. Anybody else? Any any questions? Any specific concerns? Let me just um, open the chat box and see and scroll down right to the bottom. I need to leave. I have a meeting now. Of course, Mika. I have a nice weekend. We'll chat again next week. Right. Thank you very much. Anybody else? All good? Those are yeah, the rest are not yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Enjoy the weekend. We will um, chat again next week. Email me if you have any problems. I will address to um, them um, if I can or get somebody to help you if I can't.